And my beloved mothers, I owe you an acknowledgement. I definitely do know that you are going through so much to try and look after your children. You are definitely going through so much to strike the balance between your own life and the lives of your children. But that becomes your life. And I do know that we are facing so many challenges with a lot of husbands who are not supportive at all. Some of them have bad habits. For me, smoking is considered a terrible habit. So bad that we need to talk about it. We need to remind people that if the non-Muslims are saying that smoking kills and they, they are uh, you know, campaigning to give up smoking, then we definitely need to give up smoking ourselves. And I know that there are so many other challenges. We have challenges of mothers-in-law. I face crises upon crises trying to deal with so many people's matters. And trust me, why can we not make people's lives easy for the sake of Allah? Make it easy. It's not like what it used to be a long time ago where you know you have a daughter-in-law so suddenly uh, you have a slave in the home. Not at all. But then we have the other extreme where you have a problem of the in-laws, number one. And number two is you have a problem of the daughter-in-law herself who just doesn't want to chip in at all not at all we need to strike a balance come on we need to strike a balance we have these challenges yes people are becoming educated even islamically they're saying i don't need to cook I, well nobody's going to cook then because if she says i don't need to cook you say you don't need to cook he says he doesn't need to cook then what then what even the cook will say i don't need to cook because it's five o'clock i need to go home <laughs> come on so we need to compromise somewhere. We need to make each other's lives easy. It will be a sacrifice. We will have to sacrifice. When we grow our children, or when we bring our children up, we must make sure that we have told our children that you will need to sacrifice. A lot of the times our children just, you know, they find their boyfriends or their girlfriends and a little while later they come to us and they say, I want to get married. And subhanAllah, some people might just say, okay, no problem. Uh, that's it, you can get married, I don't see an issue with it. But we haven't yet told them that marriage is a very, very big sacrifice. It's a huge sacrifice. I know of a case where one of the newlyweds wants to go home every weekend. I must go to my folks. And the husband says, look, you can go every second weekend. No, I must go when I want and I must go as I want and as I wish. Well, what was the point of getting married? Well, you know what? You can't control my life. I know I can't control your life, but come on, I'm a husband. Yes, you're a wife. I'm saying go every second weekend, no problem. But every single weekend you want to go. Well, you know what? Subhanallah, these are some of the challenges we're facing. We brought up our children, but we didn't tell them. We didn't teach them. They didn't. They looked at us and we kept them in a comfort zone to the degree that the day they were thrown into the deep end, they didn't know how to swim. And they thought, you know what, it's going to be easy. It's going to be a walk in the park. I can just say, you know, I'm going to tell my dad and I'm going to tell my folks and this marriage is over. One of the challenges we're facing. So subhanallah, my mothers and sisters, it's become so difficult. It's become so difficult to deal with these things because we are guilty to start with. I was going to say sometimes, but should I say a lot of the times. It's becoming more and more. How many of us have told our children that, you know what, when you marry, it's going to be a big sacrifice. And how many of us are ready to sacrifice for our own marriages? How many? I know here today we are probably speaking to a lot of mothers. And we are speaking to a lot of perhaps even unmarried sisters who don't have children. May Allah bless you all with the best of marriages and with the best of children. But that having been said, it's a challenge. We need to tell them exactly what it is and we need to sacrifice ourselves do you know how beautiful it is to get to your mother-in-law to greet her to smile at her to present her with a gift or two once in a while well you must be sitting and thinking well i live with her i live with her okay okay even if you live with her mashallah try and make peace sometimes you can ignore things that are bad yes if there's a terrible crisis we will want to solve it and resolve it but it doesn't mean that the marriage must be broken i know for a fact that the gift of living with in-laws, I'm calling it a gift, but the gift of living with in-laws is only appreciated when you have children and when you see the good that's inculcated in those children from the qualities that these oldies happen to bring forth. Not in all cases, not in all cases. Sometimes some of them are ridiculously unreasonable.
in that particular case, you can exercise your rights. You can make a little bit of a noise. I know of marriages that have broken sometimes because people wanted to take the wrong sides and whatever else. You cannot side with oppression. Never. You can never side with oppression. But what I do know is that we can solve problems. We can try our best to resolve matters and issues. So my mothers and sisters, that's one of the challenges that we face. And like I said, if we develop ourselves, we will definitely be able to address these matters. We will definitely be able to help our own children and ourselves. But my mothers and sisters, let's move beyond this. And let's go to something that I should have perhaps started with, but I didn't intentionally because I wanted to bring up materialism before anything else. I feel it's one of the biggest crises, one of the challenges we're facing. We are also facing my mothers and sisters a distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We think we can solve all our problems with money. That's what we think. We think we can solve all our problems with power, with position, with who you know. These are worldly matters. The truth is, we solve our problems by our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if I don't have a lot, the truth is, I will be able to achieve contentment if I'm close to Allah. Everyone has problems. You look at me and you think I don't have challenges. I have huge challenges. I have people who perhaps don't even want to see me alive. MashaAllah. And why? Not because I said anything nasty. Just because they don't want to see someone maybe who's successful in some way. The same will happen to you. People don't want to see your success perhaps. Every single person that we have with us this morning has challenges, some really difficult problems, issues. That's why we always, when we make a dua, we say, Oh Allah, help everyone in their own way. Whatever difficulties they are facing, help them. We all have sicknesses, illnesses. Some are more serious than others. If I were to tell you I'm coming from a hospital right now because I wasn't well for the last two whole weeks and I've got a trip this evening going to Qatar and tomorrow morning as soon as I land I've got two programs, one at a school and one a function for a group of sisters as well. May Allah make it easy for us all. Challenges. And on top of that, you have people trying to make your life difficult. You have issues. We may have you know, so many different types of problems, but that's life. You got to be happy, smile. It's beautiful. That's what it's all about. It's a challenge. It's like an obstacle. You know, I know people who are into cycling. I know people who are into, for example, uh, golf. I know people, okay, golf is the easy one. Let's not talk about it. I know people who are into athletics, who are into rugby. And guess what? It's a challenge. It's it's something, it's a race against time. And at the same time, you're trying to improve. A lot of you must be, subhanAllah, into health, right? Into your, your shape and your, your size. And at the same time, your, your food, what you're eating. You want to go to the gym. I hope it's a halal gym, inshallah. But you want to go to the gym. Alhamdulillah, very good. Don't you think for a moment that whatever you're doing to keep fit is very difficult? It's a challenge. Why didn't Allah just say eat and drink? And when you say subhanallah, subhanallah, you start shedding. You start shedding. You know, if that was the case, we would be reading tasbih every day, all day. Because as you're saying subhanallah, you're losing weight. Alhamdulillah, you're losing weight. Ooh, we would say subhanallah, 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 subhanallah. And we would stand on the scale and say subhanallah. Yes, it's not that easy. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's telling you even to shed a kilo. There is an effort required. It's a challenge. It's depressing sometimes to look at the scale. It is depressing because on one hand you have lovely food and you want to be a chef and you want to impress and you want to have nice food and you want to go out to eat. But the other hand, subhanallah, you know what? You are so worried about your weight and you have to do something about it. And you, in fact, if you, if you are in shape, mashallah, you're worried about losing that. I shouldn't be losing this. I've worked hard to achieve it. I want to ask you a question. So if you've worked hard so much to achieve this in terms of your, your figure or your health, mashallah, it was good. Don't you feel so good? Yes, you do. Well, to get to Allah, you're going to have to work even harder. You're going to have to work even harder. It's a challenge to get up for salah. It's a challenge to dress appropriately. The problem with us is sometimes when we're in shape, shaitan comes to us and wants us to show that now. Now I'm in shape. So what? No one knows. 
Your husband knows, well, that's not good enough, isn't it? That's what shaitan comes and tells us. He comes and tells us, surely others should know about it. Come on, you need to show it. Wear something tight. Wear something revealing. Come on, everyone needs to see and say, wow. Because I worked so hard. I need acknowledgement and appreciation. That's shaitan coming to you. And that's one of the challenges we face today, where we want to do things against what Allah wants in order for us to be acknowledged by others. And that acknowledgement leads to something else because you get acknowledged, then you come back home and your husband forgets to acknowledge. And then you start thinking to, myself, to yourself, you know what? Somebody else is appreciating me and he doesn't. That's shaitan, shaitan coming again and again. So mashallah, you achieved one thing, but you're losing on the other front. So my mothers and sisters, what's important for us to know is developing the link with Allah is a challenge. The reason why I gave this example is people are ready to work so hard to be able to cycle, to be able to run, to be able to lose weight. They're ready to work so hard to do things, to follow a strict regime, to follow a strict diet. But when it comes to Allah, we're not ready to work even half as hard. I'm happy because I've, I feel healthy. You don't know you're going to die. One second after you've closed your eyes, you're going to need help. Help that none of your exercise, none of your wealth, none of anything else would have actually or will be able to. It won't be able to come to your assistance at that point. But I tell you what, if you used it in the right direction, and if you did not compromise your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then indeed you will be a person who's really happy. You will be a person who will be, have gained the world and the hereafter that's what we all want i'm a person i believe in a balance if you take a careful look at the internet there are people who say don't use it that's ridiculous i have to use it there are people who say the social media stay far away from it yes it's easy for me to say stay away from social media but it's ridiculous because the reality on the ground is something else i can say it but i need whatsapp whatsapp is part of social media do you know that I can say it, but I need, for example, sometimes, uh, you know, to keep in touch. There's nothing wrong. I need to be in a group. You know, people become bored because they don't have things to do. Today, you can join an online group and you're part of a group. You don't need to meet in person, but it's a support group, for example, for cancer and AIDS. That's what we have today. Why am I here? Because I support the cause. And at the same time, subhanallah, it could be an online group where you talk to each other, you motivate each other, you have problems, you discuss things. I know when I'm going through something, a lot of the times I'll Google it. I had a pain in my back the once and I started Googling why this pain would come. And I got such a beautiful response from so many different websites and I actually managed to get to the diagnosis of it. And the problem was solved after a period of time. I got stretches and exercises on YouTube. I started following them and I started making sure that I did it. And honestly, I'm talking of myself. I helped myself. Through what? Through the same internet. And you know what? Interacting with people. They put it up on their social media and their websites. And mashallah, a person like me benefited from it. So what I've tried to do is to strike a balance. To strike a balance. We are religious. We do fulfill our five salah. We are people who've learned a lot about the deen. We don't want to compromise it. We do make mistakes once in a while. We are people who commit sin because we are human being. When I say sin, there are different levels of sin, obviously. But at the same time, we want to, as, as, you know, as Muslim as we are, we want to make sure that we don't present a picture to the youth of today that in order to be a good Muslim, you must be divorced from the rest of the world and all technology and everything to do with materialism and all accessories and every handbag. In the minute you have one, you cannot be a good Muslim. No, we want to teach them you can be balanced. That's what we want to teach. And this is the reason why I've used social media the way I have. People say, well, why are you on Instagram? And I tell them, you know what? It's in order to show the young children or the youth of today that you can be a Muslim, you can be a good Muslim, and you can have a little bit of fun. I know there are problems and crises across the globe. I know of Syria, I know of Palestine, I know of Afghanistan, I know of Somalia, I know of Philippines, I know of everything that's happening. 
I know and I, I, I keep abreast and at the same time I make dua for them. I help wherever I can. I've supported causes in so many different ways. I've helped raise funds in order to reach out to refugees and those who are struggling. I've helped in my own way but I know people will never be satisfied. They always want you to do things the way they want. No, live your life the way you have to live it. You strike the balance. You have a family. You have so many other things and you need to be religious but at the same time they need to have fun. I need to take my my children sometimes out it doesn't mean that because the world is suffering in Syria my children must be blocked at home and they must sit in the room and locked that's it, it doesn't mean that I will definitely reach out to them I will teach my children about it I will take my children I will make them give away some of their own things some of their pocket money and so on but I will also let them have a little bit of fun. I don't get so much of time with my children, so I will take them. So that's the reason why I will show on social media a few things. I know a lot of people have picked on me because perhaps I've done things that others might not have. They say, no, you're supposed to be a scholar. Yes, yes, definitely. You're supposed to teach. You learn Quran from me. You learn Hadith from me. You learn Tafsir from me. And at the same time, you learn that you need to have a bit of fun sometimes. You need to really take your family, go out, have a meal, enjoy it, go and have, you know, go and do something daring if that's the type of person you are. Mashallah, there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing. These are challenges. When we decide to tell the youth that you need to divorce yourself from what's going on on the globe, we've created a group of people who are not real people. They're either hypocrites or they are people who keep on looking at others and wishing and wanting and at the same time, they're not getting so they develop bad habits. They get into pornography. They get into, uh, you know, so many other bad things. Pornography is a disaster. It's a disaster. But why do people go into it? I did a lot of studying. I've mixed with people who are gurus when it comes to teaching people how to get out of these type of bad habits and, and you know, give, counseling them and so on and having workshops. I've met some people on a global level who are powerful in this regard and they tell me, idle mind, do something physical. You know, my child, I bought for him a little small helicopter, the size, the, you know, one of the smallest, they say it's the smallest in the world. Not so expensive, subhanAllah. And a few days ago, he was playing with it and he was saying, this is awesome. And he's flying it inside and indoors. And, and I'm thinking to myself, Alhamdulillah, this is far better than sitting on your iPad. You know, the games of today are a challenge. They're killing people. Computer game. The more you kill, the more points you get. I fail to understand why they don't make a game where the more lives you save, the more points you earn. I haven't seen that. It should be. But someone somewhere is serving an agenda and a purpose. And we're getting caught. We just buy them the game. I want this game. I want that game. Where did they learn about it? From school. School, where did they get it? From the TV. From wherever else. All the pressure. But no, something physical. When they do something and you acknowledge them. And, you know, something beautiful. So take them out, but you're going to have to spend time with them. I know you must be saying, tell our husbands. The reality is they will hear what I've said. They will hear it. Definitely. The husbands, we need to spend time with our family members. Time is one of the most valuable things. It's far more valuable than throwing a thousand rands or 20,000 rands at someone. If you want to build them, spend time with them. That's what it is. I am here this morning spending time with you. I could have just sent it to you and told you, you know what, play this. No, it's important. I'm here personally, myself. I'm here and I've decided let's talk about it. This is a cause. One of the challenges we're facing is also the, the AIDS and, and diseases that people are perhaps affected with. Not to say that we shouldn't be doing something about helping those who are affected but we should also be talking about how it is spread and how we can prevent a lot of us are guilty of not talking about it sometimes we are guilty of misbehaving sexually it's a reality it's a fact may allah protect us all we're living in a hypersexual age there's no need to deny that it's a reality a lot of us are hooked onto pornography and we want to help the world so, like I say, when you live a real life, you will face challenges. People might look at you and think, you know what, why is this person doing this? We need to strike a balance. A balance between what's happening on the ground, understanding it, 
doing something about it, living your life, fulfilling your responsibilities to Allah and to your family, and at the same time trying to make sure that when you die, you go to a good place and those whom you leave behind will be left behind in a good place as well. What a big challenge. What a big challenge, subhanallah. May Allah make it easy for us. So I recall the difference between Facebook, the way I use it, and Twitter, the way I use it, and Instagram, the way I use it, and Snapchat, the way I use it. I can quickly let you know because it's part of the challenge. Facebook, I've normally tried to keep it clean, a message a day for Muslims, for non-Muslims. If they look at it, it's coming from a Muslim leader, so I don't need to say that, oh, you know what, this is a teaching of Islam. The fact that it's coming from someone like me, even the non-Muslims would know this is something to do with Islam and it's something to do with the Islamic religion. Secondly, when it comes to Twitter, the same. So we've tried to keep it short so that it's 140 characters. It fits here, it fits there, because I don't have the time to create a message three, four times a day to fit here and another one which is longer for Facebook. So it, the both go there. I cannot interact with everyone. I have admin that actually looks at it and they happen to be family members of mine and a few others. And they happen to help me for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, it's good. So what happened to Instagram? Well, Instagram, many years ago I heard about it and I thought to myself, Do you know what? It's not for me because you got to put photos there photos then I thought to myself no it's not just photos I can create an image and write a message on that image and that can be the image I can put it up because Instagram is just to put up pictures and little videos so what happened is I started taking some of these posts and converting them myself myself by searching googling for images and if you google for an image in Arabic it's very interesting because you find images that others might not have seen subhanallah you see and then your message is in English. So now you, you have, a, say for example, there's a message last night, I searched on Google. I'm going to tell you what it was. It was about sadness. We spoke about being sad. And I, just before I, I, I slept, at midnight almost, I googled Hazinun Jidden. What does that mean? Very sad. And then I said, Tiflun Hazin. And then I found an image. And I saw four or five images. So I asked my wife, which image is better I thought one with a little boy was better and she thought the one with a little girl was better and I said okay I'm gonna take this should I put the you know the writing on the on the side or at the top and bottom she said the previous one was top and bottom so I suggest you do it in the middle and I did it in the middle and I put it up and I know that people on the globe would appreciate it so many people are there why am I doing this because the children are there the youth are there they on Instagram they sitting go and check they like it before you've actually posted it I don't know how that works but before I can refresh my page there's already two three likes where did you come from man but that's how they are so because they are there it's my responsibility and duty to get to where they are people say yes come to the masjid for a program go to mashallah the Suleiman Nana memorial for a for a program yes correct we can only fit a certain number this talk will probably be watched by 20,000 people in no time online subhanallah if Allah wills and if it's done properly so now if you take a careful look at Technology, there's no point in me saying that I'm not going to use it because you're not allowed to use it when I'm a responsible person to create leaders or to help people to come out of their shell and to learn something about the deen when they are just using it for dunya, for the world. So I'll come out and I'll tell them, I'll give them a good message. They will be proud to associate with someone who's balanced. Why? Because they know it's not an embarrassment. If my Muslim, non-Muslim friends see the, the quotations of this person I'm following, they will know that, you know what? This is a lovely, lovely, lovely way of life. Beautiful. I'm not going to say something embarrassing. I'm not going to say something dirty. I'm not going to say that quit your life, you know, get a life, forget about perfume and makeup and everything else, throw it away. I'm only going to teach you how to balance yourself. Balance it. We're not saying throw it away. It's a realistic approach. It's not an idealistic approach. It's a realistic approach. So basically, after that, you find like the other day, and I'm just telling you this because it's a challenge, and I'm telling it to you because I'm here in person to talk to you. The other day I was at, 
I was in Port Elizabeth and I went to Quantu Game Reserve. Mashallah, beautiful place. I was there just for a day. They wanted me to stay longer, but I couldn't because I didn't have the time. So what happened is we went to feed the elephants. So I was feeding the elephants and they to the, one of the game rangers told me, or one of the guys there, the trainers told me, you know what, don't use your right hand. I used my right hand. They said, no, use your left because it's safer for you. It's more protective. In case something happens, you've got to go, or whatever else, you have more maneuvering. You're a right-handed person, whatever their explanation was. So I used the left, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to put this up on Instagram. Short video, short, few seconds. Why? Just so that people know being religious is not being boring. You don't have to be a boring person. Some people think you're religious, that's it. You sit in the masjid and that's it. Not being boring. I want the young people to come towards religion. That's the dream. I want them to come. It's a challenge we're facing and how to bring them. If they see, okay, it's interesting. I can be a religious person and look, wow, I can enjoy myself. That's the way. So there are so many people across the globe who might have wanted to do this and they're going to say, hey, I need to do this. And guess what? So I put it up. And mashallah, you get hundreds of beautiful comments, lovely people commenting. And a little while later, my son says, you see, somebody says, you're not a proper Muslim. I say, what do you mean? Because you're feeding the elephant with your left. It's so easy for me to answer that and say, look, we are told, and this is the truth, we're told to feed ourselves with the right. As for how you feed an, an animal, there's no rules in Islam about that. So it was easy for me to argue, but guess what? I decided to explain by doing what by putting up another clip of me feeding with the right earlier on you know earlier on when i was still learning if you notice i quickly took my hand out because i was a little bit scared some of you who might have seen i'm sure a lot of you would have seen it because most of us would probably know what instagram is all about and we probably have accounts there i just hope we're all doing the right thing on there mashallah so when that happened, then you can hear this guy in the background say, use your left hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So what happened? I had to explain myself. I wasn't a typical Maulana who comes and says, listen guys, you got to, you got to know. If you don't trust me, then just shut up and get out. That's not how it works anymore. It doesn't work. Like you got to explain, you got to talk. And you sometimes, I have said, I'm sorry. When I, when I know that I wasn't wrong, just to sort the problem out. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I should, you know, I, I perhaps will improve next time. Thank you so much. Thank you for your input and so on. Sometimes, subhanallah, it's good to listen. Like when I, when I attend functions, I always tell the volunteers, please email me telling me where I went wrong because that's how I want to improve. And when they email me telling me where I went wrong, I get that email and you know what? I respond to it. I reply, thank you so much. I appreciate your comment. And I appreciate the correction. And I will take it and you will notice the next time. Give you an example. Can I tell you? Did you notice I spoke about mothers-in-law today? And what did I say? A few seconds later, I said, look, some of the daughters-in-law are also to blame. Did you hear me say that? Guess why? Last week, someone sent me an email, a long email, telling me you've blasted us enough. What about the daughters-in-law? Some of them are like this and like this. So there is an exception. When people are generally good shaitan is bad it's not that there are some mothers-in-law who are absolutely amazing I've come across daughters-in-law sons-in-law who will say I wouldn't trade this mother-in-law for anything on earth mashallah goals that's where I'd like to be one day soon when I'm a father-in-law they must say wow top man you know I don't want to be a pain and some fathers-in-law mothers-in-law are so dominating controlling as though they the ones who got married it's like you got married to them. That's what it is. But then you have the other side of the coin needs to be spoken about. Some daughters-in-law are such that they come in already, you know, ready for a rugby match. You know, they've come in with the, the, tea, the guards, you know, the, the mouth guards and everything, the, the bandage around their head and they want to just fight. That's not what you're there for. They're not all, you know, not all mothers-in-law are bad. Sometimes the mistake is on the other side. It's a sacrifice. It's something great. It's something that we need to face in such a way that when I leave this world, I've left it a better place and I'm gone to a better place. Like I said, one second after you close your eyes, you know what you're going to need? The amount of sacrifice that you've made for the sake of Allah. Where's your salah? My mothers and sisters, where's your salah? Today we came here on time. Why? We wanted to listen to a talk or two.
What about our salah? If you missed fajr today, you wasted it. Are we ready, inshallah, to change that? I hope and I pray we can. Inshallah, we all should improve, myself included. Sometimes salah time comes and we dilly dallying, we're going, you know, we're doing something else. I'll do it just now. Don't say just now. Please fulfill it. It's a challenge. You know why? Today there's no barakah in time. There's no blessings in time anymore. In the sense that before we could get five things done in the morning and there'd still be an hour left. Today, you and I know one thing you're about to do and your morning is almost over. It's a fact. It's a sign of qiyamah. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may Allah grant us all uh, goodness and ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us improve ourselves and then help us to help others to improve.